What's up, boys? This is the Beer League Beauties podcast, sponsored by Gladiator Energy. Um, Connor, if you haven't had one, go get one. Maybe we'll ship some out to you. Um, so uh, this is the 26th episode. We got Connor on here. Uh, he goes to Florida Gulf Coast. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on here, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, so let's get right into it. Uh, so you played some EHL hockey with uh, the Big Cat Rally donor. Um, how was that out there? I was really good. Um, the year I got there was uh, 2017, so it was right after. I went to the Junior Flyers, and it was a year after they won the EHL. So, you know, they're a pretty established program. Um, the league was great. Um, they're all about, you know, advancing guys to the next level. Um, I got to live with all the captains from the year before that were on the championship team. So, you know, being a young guy uh, coming in, not knowing anybody and living away from home for the first time, you know, it was a really good experience to be with those guys. Um, overall, you know, the year was, you know, had its ups and downs, but, you know, the league does a really good job at getting us in front of, you know, scouts, like especially division three college scouts. Um, so overall, it was a really good experience. Had a good coaching staff, uh, Jerry Domish. Um, just, you know, he was a legend around the EHL when he was coaching at the time. So, you know, it was always nice to pick his brain a little bit. And, you know, he'd pick your brain and, you know, he'd definitely push you hard to be a good player. So overall, the year was good. And at the end of the day, I got to move on. So it's pretty fortunate. Yeah, so, you know, as a junior hockey player, like your goal is to play college hockey. Um, so what kind of colleges were you looking at? Uh, and how is that process of committing? Holy shit. You hear that? Yeah. It's fucking ripping. Um, no. So for me, um, at the time it was my, it wasn't my age out year. So I ended up when I committed, I, I wasn't the age out um at the time so I had one more year left so at the time I was only talking to like just a small number of schools like two or three schools I, think I was talking to Becker I was talking to Chatham um and then I was also talking to um Assumption um but uh at the time um you know the process was interesting because you know we'd go up from Philly up to the showcases up in Walpool um, at Rodman Arena, you know, a lot of the schools, the D3 schools are based out of Massachusetts and like the Northeast area. Um, so at the time, you know, I just had, you know, I had like a little, you know, group of schools that, you know, I was interested in and I was talking to. Um, but if I ended up staying around for my, you know, my age out year, I probably would have had a few more options, but I was just pretty content with, you know, the options I currently had. And, you know, one of my best friends at the time was already at Becker. Um, and he was pushing me really hard to commit there and go there. And, you know, I was going to live with him. And, you know, he just wanted me to be up there with him. And, you know, it's hard to say no to one of your best friends. And, you know, to you know not have to age out an extra year. So at the time, just I had this small group. Um, but, you know, it ended up working out. So I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, it's usually like that best friend that gets you there. Um, yeah, we had a kid on my on my uh, team last year, Southern Maine. Um, his it, one of his best friends was like a Division One uh, hockey player at LIU, and um, that kid had no business coming to Southern Maine. You know, he could have went to Hobart or you know one of those top D three schools, and he ended up coming to Southern Maine because his best friend was there. You know, it's all about that that best friend getting you there and, you know, um, telling you how good it is there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, how was Becker, um, you know, playing in that first game of, you know, college hockey, how'd you feel? If you can, you know, remember it a while back. Yeah, no, it was, uh, you know, like I said, I didn't age out. So, I got in there pretty young. I was... I think I was the youngest kid on the team. Um, 
I was only 20 years old at the time too. And I'm playing with like, I think I had a couple 94s on our team, maybe even a 93. I mean, I'm a 98. Um, but you know, you getting in that first game was unbelievable. I just, you know, one of the coaches came up to me and like at the practice a couple of days before the game and was like, Hey, you're going to be in this weekend. So get ready for that and, you know, get mentally prepared and, you know, but at the same time, get excited where you're playing, uh, New England college at home, you know, a really good program. Um, didn't really know what to expect, you know, being a new guy and, you know, just trying to get my feet wet. Uh, but it was pretty funny. Uh, like, like probably like half an hour before I was going to leave for the rink. My dad's like, yeah, go to your front door real quick at the, you know, at the dorms. And I'm like, yeah, okay, what's up? And I just thought I had a package or something. And he's like, he just walks up to the front door. He's like, you thought I was going to miss your first game counter. And I'm like, <laughs> That was a pretty good surprise. So I'm like, all right, now I gotta, I gotta try and play pretty well tonight. Um, but uh, just walking out on the ice, national anthem, you know, I was a little nervous, but you know, I got the first shift in, and you know, felt pretty good, and ended up having a pretty solid game, um, even though we lost. But it was just, it was awesome to have my dad there, and you know, get the feet wet, and you know, get to play my first, you know, collegiate hockey game. So it was an awesome experience. Yeah. Um. You said you guys live in Michigan, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah, so that's a that's a long enough flight right there. Pretty cool to get that surprise. Yeah, oh yeah, no, absolutely, man. Yeah. Um all right, so you had three great years. You had some um do you have some good buddies out there that you're still in touch with? Yeah, so I like I mean, our last year, um, like during the COVID year before you know, our school ended up shutting down. Um, we got really close, you know, because we were going into it. We knew that, you know, we had a couple games left together, literally as a program and as a school. So, you know, as a team, we got super close. And even with guys that, you know, you wouldn't, you know, necessarily hang out with, you know, a lot, um, you know, you just became really close to them because, you know, you were there with them through thick and thin. Um I still have a bunch of buddies from up there. A lot of um, a lot of them ended up transferring to uh, Western New England and Riviere. Um, I'd say probably like five or six guys went to Riviere, and then like three or four went to Western New England, and then some of the Riviere kids ended up transferring over to Western New England this year. Um, but we all still keep in touch. Like we have our games against UMass up there with you know Florida Gulf Coast where I'm at right now. So. Uh, the past two years that I've gone up there, we just we've gotten lunch in between games, and some of them have come to our games, and you know just gotten to catch up and stuff. But they're all doing well. We all keep in touch, and you know we're just happy to share all the good memories we had there at Becker. Yeah, it's cool getting to you know getting close to the guys that you were never really close with. You know, yeah, the guys that you wouldn't think that are your friends, all of a sudden just become like one of your best friends. It's pretty cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, so other guys went to other colleges, but uh, – Charger. <laughs> You're good, man. Uh, so guys went to Western uh, New England and Riviera. Um, so where did you go, and why did you pick Florida Gulf Coast? I know where you went. But... Yeah, no, you're good. Um, <clears throat> So my two, like – two of my best friends um, were, you know, playing hockey at their respective schools. One was at Milwaukee School of Engineering. Um, and then our other buddy was at Aurora University in Illinois. And these guys are like the guys that I grew up with in Michigan. Like they're like my brothers. We train together all summer. Um, we do everything together. Um, they just out of like a spur of chance um, they were looking to transfer from their schools and um, our buddy from Milwaukee Spence his uh, his parents moved to Florida um, so he kind of had an idea already of Florida Gulf Coast um, and then my parents actually recently moved to Florida as well so I kind of knew about Florida Gulf Coast like I knew about the program like really strong program they've won three championships um, just a great environment, great school to, you know, be on, be on campus. Um, so we just kind of got together over 
uh, this spring and just, we all took a visit down to Fort Myers and we just took a tour with the team, watched a practice and had some dinner. And, you know, we were like, this is the place to be. I mean, we could go play our last one or two years at, you know, another D3 school, or we could play our last, you know, one or two years at, you know, in paradise with a great program and a great environment. And it was just kind of like a no brainer for us. Um, I just, I took the tour on campus with those guys and I loved it. Uh, classroom sizes are perfect. You know, you've got Greek life here. You've got, you know, division one sports teams like, you know, basketball, they're famous for dunk city. Like they're just, and it's a great area. I mean, you're on, you're in Fort Myers, you're on the beach, you got a beach on campus. Like it was just hard to beat. So that was probably the big reason why I ended up choosing here because my best friends were coming and, you know, it's just hard to beat this environment down here. Dude, it really is. It's fucking so nice down there. Yeah. My grandparents have a house down there. That's, um, you know, why I was, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so they live right in, is it Estero or is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, so it, it, it's Estero. I mean, it's kind of like split up like halfway like a sterile like fort myers is like everywhere but like just where like the school is it's considered a sterile but i mean the beach is like without traffic and everything it's like five miles from our school so you know it's we call ourselves consider ourselves like fort myers but it's a sterile really but i, I didn't just think of it as the same thing yeah um yeah i think we play you guys we got the schedule right here. Yeah. You guys twice. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's going to be a good battle. You guys got a good program, and, uh, you know, we've got a great crowd and great team, so it should be a good weekend for everybody. Yeah. Um, so you guys play at the Hertz. Um, you got the ECHL team. But um, you guys play on that little, like, the smaller rink. Um, yeah. How is that like? What what kind of fans do you guys bring in, and what is that like playing in front of? Because I know it's it's a big crowd too. Yeah, no, it, it's great. I mean, I I kind of like the fact that we play on you know the practice rink because you know we can fill in the arena, um, because Hertz is like massive. It's like nine thousand, um, people, um, uh, like a nine thousand capacity seating arena. Well, the small, the smaller rink, it's nice because everything's super tight and we're able to pack the place and, you know, we're familiar with, you know, the ice and our locker room is, it's actually pretty interesting because our locker room's like upstairs. So we got to walk downstairs, but we walk down the stairs and the rink that we play on is right there. So, um, and it's pretty unique and we've got the gym upstairs as well. So people can watch games from up there. Like there's a little lounge area with couches. So um, it, it's a great environment to be in though. I mean, you'll see it firsthand when you guys come down here with your team. Um, you know, we're three, four deep on the glass. Uh, the stands are completely full. We've got security guards, uh, police officers at the game. Um, you know, the crowd loves to get into it. Like we have a little student section um, at the end um with uh our lacrosse team comes to our games a lot they love coming out and supporting us we do the same for them we'll come to their games but it's just it's nice tight packed and it's just a great environment to be in i remember my first game there um i ended up starting uh with my uh one of my buddies that transferred here the milwaukee guy spence and you know it was just like wow man i you know played division three up in boston for three years and i've never played in front of a crowd like this at home so it was a great experience, but uh, it's going to be fun. And you guys, you guys will have fun too. So yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome to play in front of. Um, Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, man. Um, Do they have like, yeah, they sell like beer and shit there, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they sell alcohol at the games if you're 21. So, yeah. you know, at the student section and all the fans and the parents, you know, they usually, got the arena buzzing so yeah. it definitely keeps everything entertained and you know we got the security there you know just to keep everything in check but uh do they get the uh what's it called the beer pyramid going i I've, i'm trying to think like i don't know if i think my first year i saw it a couple times but 
you know, with all the, you know, hitting and everything going on the glass, like, I think everyone's a little scared to do a beer, beer pyramid because if someone just gets hit, you know, it goes everywhere and then security is going to be like, oh, you can't do that anymore. But I don't know. I, I've seen it once, but I haven't seen it in a while. So, you know, maybe when you're down, I don't know, tell them to get the beer pyramid flowing. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, do you guys have like certain theme nights and stuff? Um, Our first year we did theme nights. Like uh, we had Lindenwood come down uh, two years ago. We did like a paint the rink night um i'm trying to think what other themes we did i i know our first year we did a couple of, you know theme nights um i'm sure we'll have a theme night or two this year we just haven't you know really planned out a specific theme night but i'm sure we will we'll do something fun or for a charity or for a cause like pink the rink yeah um so besides that first game what was your like the rowdiest crowd that you got to play in front of um like from at fgcu or up at becker yeah uh fgcu um so going back to our first year um we had liberty at home and we really promoted uh that weekend slate of games because i think at the time we were number two in the southeast and they were one we had like the same record. We had, uh, I think we played them once at the beginning of the year. They beat us three to two. So, you know, we pretty much knew, like both teams knew going in, they're like the winner of this weekend is going to be number one going into nationals. So it was a big tilt. Yeah. Um. So like literally we had a bunch of guys on campus going around, putting flyers up everywhere. I was hanging. I hung probably like a hundred flyers around like the whole campus and, we were just like we on the flyer. We had like biggest game of the year, uh, Liberty against FGCU. Like we were promoting it really well. Um, I'll have to send you this picture too. I should have sent it to you, but there's a picture of us. Um, like there's just this huge scrum in front of the net, and like you have the whole crowd like behind the net, and it's like five or six deep. There are guys like sitting on top of each other, like just people like pushing each other to get out of the way to like see what's going on, but. That was the biggest crowd like at FGC I've ever played in front of. We ended up winning. We swept the weekend. Um, had some good timely goals. I think uh, I don't know if it was the first or second game. Our uh, one of our uh, seniors scored with like around a minute left, and we won by one goal. So that was huge. But it was like five or six deep on the glass. Like we had kids in the kids in the stands getting thrown out by the refs and. Just it was really rowdy and, you know, everyone knew that like both sides knew the impact that this game was going to have, you know, for nationals and the implications for nationals. So, you know, and we publicized it uh, really well. So that was probably the best crowd we've ever played in front of. That's um, sweet. Yeah. Um, sounds pretty fucking rowdy. Yeah. Um, it looks it too, you know. Yeah. No, it's, it's fun. I mean, like I said, you'll see it when – you guys come yeah. down. I'm sure we'll have a big crowd for that game. Yeah. Um, I mean, geez, I couldn't imagine being like a junior hockey player and like seeing this, seeing this shit now. You know, it's like club hockey is not frowned upon anymore. You know, I feel yeah, like it was at a time, like, but now it's not. It's like I'd rather play in front of this shit than fucking go play at Anna Maria in front of yeah, yeah, no, fans. yeah, I. You know, I, I had a great time at Becker and I made a lot of good friends and, you know, played against a lot of really, really good players. But at the same time, it's, you know, if I knew about Florida Gulf Coast, you know, before, you know, I ended up, you know, committing to whether it's Becker, or Chatham or whatever school like offered it, you know, if I knew about FGCU, I probably would have been down here, yeah. you know, all four or five of my years because it's just, it's awesome. And, you know, all the teams we play, teams like UMass, like you guys at Kentucky, uh, Tampa, like, I mean, they're all just really good, solid programs with guys that have played, you know, tier two, tier three. I mean, there's even some tier one guys. Like we were playing Concordia University at Nationals last year, and I think they had a, a guy that got dropped. Or I don't know if he just wanted to play club or whatever, but he had a couple, you know, games in the USHL. It's like, 
It's like the ACHA isn't a joke. It's legit, and the players are good. The talent's good. The league's good. You know, it's it's definitely uh, underrated and, you know, deserves a lot more attention. Yeah, it does. And at a point, it's just all going to turn Division One hockey. You know, you're going to have, like, Alabama, you know, Clemson, all those, like, SEC schools just going D1, and our kids are going to be able to commit there. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think ASU has uh, really laid a solid foundation uh, for uh, developing, you know, ACHA and AAU programs into becoming, uh, you know, full time NCAA Division One programs. Um, I can't remember the ASU coach's name, but you know, he was with those guys when they were ACHA, and he's still with them now. And you know, it's. You know, it's like a testimonial to, you know, what these programs, you know, have done, what they're currently doing and what they can become. You know, mm -hmm. it's just all about getting, you know, support from everybody to, you know, do it. So it's awesome to see. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's talk about your um, – all right. Maybe not your first goal, but I guess it can be your, your first goal or your best goal at Florida Gulf Coast. Um Tell us about how you got that goal, like the sequence of it, and your what you did for a celly. Um, so I like you know you said earlier at Becker, I I was pretty unfortunate with you know trying to put the puck in the net. Um, but uh, when I got to FGCU, I think it was our second weekend. I got my first goal. Just yeah. came across a blue with some speed and just shot far side against Concordia. Yeah. And I scored and I just heard the crowd, you know, go nuts. And, you know, just like mentally inside, I went nuts because, you know, that was my first goal in a while. And I just, I let all the emotions out, just went, you know, full, like across the blue line, just, you know, Patty Kane. And then I came to the bench and I just like spread on my arms and I was like, ooh, like, and I hockey house got a picture of it. I got on hockey house that week. I'll have to send that to you. Yeah. But I just I let all I let all the emotions out. You know, it was just a huge relief to, you know, get that off my back and you know, it helped win the game. So that was probably the, you know, best feeling goal I've had. I mean, I've had a couple other goals um that have, you know, been, you know, pretty solid, but that was a special one just to get the first. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Like, you know, being able to like get off the schneid and um, that's what they say. They say that that's a thing, right? Getting off the schneid. I, I don't know. You're, you're from uh, you're from, you're a Boston guy, right? You're a Northeastern guy. Yeah. yeah. So I've heard that one, but uh, yeah. getting off the schneid, throwing the monkey off the back, 